Um, so good, after good afternoon, everyone. My name is Patricia. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm a PhD student at Hovion and University of Coimbra. And today I'm presenting benchmarking of particle engineering technologies for nasal powder manufacture. So uh, first of all, uh, nasal delivery is a promising route for the administration of drugs for systemic delivery. Uh, and powder formulations have a lot of advantages over liquids as they're better stability and increased residence time in the nasal cavity. Uh, but what happens exactly? So after the administration with the device, the particles need to deposit on the nasal mucosa where the drug needs to dissolve in order to permeate it. Uh, and mucoadhesive materials as polymers are frequently used since they increase the, the contact time with the mucosa and avoid a fast mucociliary clearance. Uh, but how can we produce these formulations? So considering a drug and a mucoadhesive excipient, uh, manufacturing strategies include spray drying, uh, blending of the components or agglomeration of primary particles into chimeral agglomerates, which will de agglomerate upon uh, actuation with the device. Uh, so spray drying allows particle size control, which is very important to guarantee nasal deposition, not lung deposition. Uh, and it also allows the generation of more amorphous solid dispersions, which are advantageous for poorly soluble drugs. Uh, however, blending is a much more simple process and chimera chimeral agglomerates should allow faster dissolution upon breakup into smaller particles. So basically in this work, we wanted to understand whether spray dried microparticles have significant advantages over blends and agglomerates for a poorly uh, soluble drug, which was pyroxicam, uh, by means of in vitro performance tests. Um, so having in mind the generation of amorphous solid dispersions, we started by polymer and drug load screening. Uh, first, we did the DSC of oven dried solutions of drug and excipients uh, and looked for the thermal events. So the formulations with a single glass transition temperature were preferred. Uh, then we performed solvent shifts to assess the onset of crystallization during the solution. Basically, the drug was dissolved in the DMF at a high concentration and then diluted with simulated nasal fluid that contained the different polymers in different concentrations. So absorbance decrease corresponding to crystallization of the drug was monitored through UV absorbance in a microplate reader at a specific drug wavelength. So basically, uh, the, the longer it took to crystallize, uh, the better. Uh, so in this table is uh, the final score, which led us to the selection of PVPVA or HPMC formulations with the 20% drug load. So after that, we perform spray drying to produce particles within the nasal size range of 10 to 40 micron, uh, and also the primary particles for agglomeration. Uh, the sieve shaker was used to produce the agglomerates and the turbula mixer for the corresponding blends. Um, so regarding the characterization, um, the particle size was adequate for all of the particles produced. However, the water content was high in all of them, except for spray dried microparticles of HPMC. Uh, and here on the right, you can see their morphologies, which are quite diverse. Uh, regard regarding the solid state characterization, HPMC agglomerates showed crystalline content on the X-ray powder diffraction. Uh, and PVPVA seems to stabilize better the amorphous form of the drug because there are no recrystallization or melting events. Um, so regarding the aerodynamic performance, the powder deposition was assessed with a reduced three-stage Anderson cascading factor coupled with an expansion chamber. Uh, the expansion chamber precipitator and stage zero correspond to the nasal fraction. Uh, and all formulations presented a very high fraction potentially retained in the nasal cavity, more than 95%. Uh, then the emitted dose was, was assessed by those of unit sampling apparatus uh, and spray dried microparticles of HPNC at the highest and least variable values given the associated low water content. Uh, the agglomerates presented the lowest and most variable emitted doses. Um, the MIAT device was used for both of these performance tests, shown here on the pictures. Uh, so then we performed paddle over disc dissolution. Uh, the dosage unit sampling apparatus was used to collect the powder from the device. Uh, and then the filter uh, collected with that powder was assembled in a disc to be put on the bottom of the dissolution cup. And here in the results, we can see that um, blends and HPNC agglomerates showed poor performance, possibly to the crystalline content. And there's a high, higher performance for uh, spread dry microparticles and PVPVA agglomerates. 
So finally, uh, to understand better what happens when particles are in contact with simulated nasal fluids, laser diffraction was performed with particles in this medium. So the particle size was monitored through 150 minutes. Uh, independently of the polymer, the behavior was similar. So here we only present one graph for each kind of formulation. And what we can see is that spray dried microparticles and agglomerates in the beginning have a population of agglomerated or swelled particles with large particle sizes that eventually dissolve and lead to crystallization, which was seen by polarized light microscopy. Uh, PVPVA agglomerates take longer to deagglomerate. Uh, in all formulations, there's a, a colloidal population um, which may correspond to drug polymer colloids. In the blend, the, the polymer dissolves and the profile here seen corresponds to the crystalline API. So in conclusion, uh, spray dry and microparticles have significant advantages over agglomerates and blends, which presented more challenges either on emitted dose or the solution performance. Uh, HPMC um, spray dry microparticles here show the most promising results, which are these on the picture. Uh, so spray drying could be here the preferred strategy for poorly soluble drugs since it generates amorphous solid dispersions with improved dissolution and with uh, the suitable size for nasal delivery. Uh, future work will include MUCO adhesion testing, which is also very important in this type of formulations for nasal delivery. So thank you for your attentions and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. That was um, great to go through so much in uh, such a short period of time. I imagine we'll get a, a few questions through in a moment. But first, can you tell us a little bit more about the device you've been using for your experiments? Yeah, uh, so the MIAT device we used is a, an active device. So we have to, to press a pump so it works. And inside there's a capsule, HPMC uh, number three capsule. And basically I filled the, the capsules with uh, 20 milligrams of the formulation. And then the, the device pierces the capsule uh, and it turns and then you press the pump. That's how it works. Brilliant, thank you. And are there any results of HPMC toxicity either in the nasal mucosa or in the lung? Uh, so HPMC, actually, we used it because it's one of the few uh, excipients uh, on the FDA list of inactive ingredients uh, in nasal powders. So it has already been used in uh, products uh, approved by FDA. So we trust it's a, a, a good excipient for, for nasal delivery and without toxicity problems. But we will perform toxicity studies on cells uh, also in the future. And sorry, the final one coming through. Did you um, talk about the sort of mass of powder you're able to deliver and, and the drug loading within that? So what's the sort of total amount of drug you could uh, deliver this way? Yeah, so what is described in the literature is that the maximum quantity of powder uh, should be 25 milligrams per nostril, so uh, 50 milligrams maximum. Okay. Uh, so the drug load may be an issue if, if for example, the, the active dose is 100 milligrams, you, you can't in, uh, administer it by nasal delivery because it's too much powder and it will be uh, irritating for, for the mucosa. So normally more potent drugs are used for, for this kind of uh, delivery. Brilliant. So thank you again for the talk. That was really interesting. And uh, if we have any more questions come through or anyone watching has any questions, please email them through to the conference committee uh, as, as for any of our speakers.